Welcome to FIRST Canada's FTC training series. Controlling your robot with the gamepad is called teleop and is important for every robot. Today we will go over the basics of this by controlling a DC motor and servo motor with buttons on your gamepad. First, we will make our robot drive forward while we hold down the A button on our controller. Then, we will switch two servo motors between two predetermined positions by pressing the X button. Before we do anything, we need the correct setup for the code to work. We make a file called operator drive. We will leave the rest of the settings be. By default, the package is set and we have a class with the same name as our file. To set this as a selectable teleop from our phone, we will first add the line at teleop name equals operator drive. This will set the name of the operator drive in our phone menu. Since this is an op mode, we also want it to extend op mode, meaning that it will inherit some functions to work with a driver station phone. Inside this class, we will define two functions, init and loop, both with at override above them. This means that they are inherited from op mode. The init function, short for initialize, will be where we initialize our code. Whenever we want to set the value of a variable or do something before the match starts and a robot can move, we do it here. After the init function is called and the match starts, the loop function is where all of the action is. Think of this function as the beating heart of the robot. Each beat determines what needs to be done in that exact moment, and after it is done, it beats making it a loop as the name suggests. The next thing we need to do before writing any code is to import what we will use. The first two imports are automatically added when we set the teleop name and extended op mode. The next two imports DC motor and DC motor simple will allow us to control the DC motor drive wheels on our robot. The last import servo, similar to the DC motor import, allows us to control a servo. Once this is done, we can get started on initializing the motors. This step will configure our motors in the code and allow us to set their speed and direction. At the top in our operator drive class, we define our motors, the two DC motors for the driving wheels and the two servo motors for our claw. The private prefix means that they can only be accessed in this class, and the following word, either DC motor or servo, is the corresponding type of that variable. We do not set them to anything here, as we want them to be initialized in the init function where the initialization is meant to happen. Now, in the init function, we want to set the motor variables to the actual motor we have configured in our config. We do this by calling the hardware map.get functions and specifying the type of motor and the name that we want to set in the robot config. We do this for all four motors. Once they are initialized, we also want to change the direction of one of the driving motors because they are facing opposite directions on our robot, and otherwise when we powered them on and set them to the same speed, they would spin in opposite directions. Now that we have initialized our motors, we will start by making the robot drive forward when we hold down the A button. The first thing we need to do is set a speed at which our robot will run. First, we will define speed and then initialize it to the desired value in the init function. The speed can range from 0 to 1. However, here we set it to a smaller number so that we don't lose control while we test. Next, we need to add code to the loop function. This function is a loop that once it finishes running, it's called again as long as the robot is in operator drive. First, we need to get the current state of our A button. Either true, meaning it's pressed down, or false, it's not pressed. Without writing any code, we know that we want the robot to drive forward on true when the button is pressed and not move on false when the button isn't pressed. To do this, we need to set the speed of the motors. We simply create an if and else statement. If the button is pressed and therefore true, the code inside the if statement will be executed powering the left and right motor to our speed variable. If the button is not pressed and therefore false, the else statement will be called and that code will be executed setting the power of our left and right motors to zero. The last thing we will do today is toggle the claw servos between two positions when we press the X button. Thinking in terms of how this will work, when we press the X button, the motor should change to position two, and then when we press it again, it should go back to position one. We will start by defining two new private variables. 
servo post, which will keep track of the servo position, and old servo button, which will keep track of if the X button was pressed last time, loop was called. In the init function, we just set the servo post to zero and the old servo button to false. The old servo button variable will allow us to create the toggle effect. Instead of going to one position while holding down the button and then going back once we release, each time we press and release the button, the servo will change positions. Later, at the very end of our loop function, we will also set the old servo button to what the servo button is at the end of the loop. Like last time, we want to get the state of the button, in this case, x, and assign it to our servo button variable. And now that it is defined, we can set old servo button to the current servo button at the end of the loop. To create the toggle effect, we create an if statement that requires two statements to be true. The first statement is that the servo button is true and therefore pressed in this instant. To separate the two statements, we have the and and symbol to represent and, meaning both conditions on the left and right of the and must be true. The second statement is said aloud as not old servo button. The exclamation mark meaning not a Boolean operator that switches the Boolean to the opposite of what it currently is. So true becomes false and false becomes true. By checking if the button is pressed down at this current instant and not pressed down in the previous instant, it creates the toggle effect by making each press and release a combined event. If we did not have the second part of the statement, then if the button were accidentally held down, the servos would rapidly toggle back and forth. Inside this condition, we will have another if and else statement. We want to toggle our servo between zero and one position. So in the first condition, we check to see if the position is zero. If this is true, then we will set the position of our front servo to zero and back to one. This is because they are facing opposite directions and the servo post variable to one. In our else statement, we do the opposite by setting the servo post to zero and both front and back servos to 0.5. At the end, we update our servo position to the current servo post variable. Depending on how tight of a grip you want or how far out, you can adjust these values. Today we covered the basic of operator drive by making our robot drive forward when we press the A button and the servo claw to toggle positions when we press the X button. The concepts here are used in every robot to create controls that are intuitive and functional for the drivers.